post as usual this morning. You probably won't tomorrow. Thousands of Royal Mail workers have been on strike across the region today, but it looks as though the full effect of the stoppage won't be felt until the morning. Companies are warning that the dispute will hit businesses here hard in the run-up to Christmas. Another stoppage is already being planned. Our correspondent Matthew Hudson joins us now from Great Shelford near Cambridge. So, Matthew, how much support have you found for the strike actions? Well, we've spoken to a lot of people today, and there is support amongst quite a for others on the other hand, which can only damage Royal Mail. But perhaps the majority view was one of sort of bewilderment that this had been allowed to happen, that the sides couldn't have got round the table and sorted it out. A lot of people I spoke to thought there was simply no need for this strike at all. How else do you celebrate your 108th birthday but with a card from the Queen? It was a bit late being delivered, but Kathleen Brady's did arrive safely at the home where she lives in North Walsham in Norfolk. With the postal strike, we wasn't sure if she was going to get her telegram from the Queen and that, so I spoke to the son um, and he was a bit concerned because obviously that's a big occasion for her. So, um, but eventually it came. It was late, but it came. For many of us, our post did arrive today. Seven out of eight first-class letters we posted to Anglia TV yesterday arrived this morning. But tomorrow should bring much more disruption as the strike begins to bite. From before dawn, the pickets were out. This was Warrington in Peterborough. It was much the same elsewhere, with good-natured pickets manning the line at Norwich and at Cambridge. Today, it's sorting office staff. Tomorrow, delivery and collection workers will be on strike. The CWU says it wants a solution, but will strike again unless management changes its position. This is a last resort. It's not something we want to take, but we'll carry on taking the action until a resolution is found to this dispute. And hopefully, with government in intervention, we can actually find a resolution to, to dispute a lot sooner rather than later. That's a bleak prospect for firms like Cooper's Mail Order in Bishop Stortford. It sends out thousands of packages a day using Royal Mail and private delivery companies. The strike is costing them money. We always make sure we get the parcel to the customer on time, regardless of any industrial action. However, we do incur additional costs as a result of this action. And those are costs that we as a business have to absorb. We can't pass those on to our customers. But we see it as a, a price worth paying, because whatever happens, we have to make sure we get those uh, orders to our customers. Royal Mail says working practices must change if their service is to remain competitive. I'm, I'm a little surprised the strike is going ahead myself because uh, we have been in intensive talks and on Tuesday evening and around midnight we finally agreed a form of words with the CWU um, and we were hoping that they would then be able to abandon these damaging strikes and really enable us to, uh, to get on with modernising the company. But the union says plan changes go too far and will mean job losses and overwork for those who remain. For customers, there's frustration that the dispute hasn't been sorted out earlier. I shouldn't have got this far, no, it's ridiculous. It's just going to damage the postal service. I think they should have uh, sorted it out before it gets to the point where they have to feel they have to go on strike. Um, because the, the backlog that's going to be, you know, from just one day strike is going to be enormous, really, isn't it? Many experts believe private delivery firms like TNT, which has this major base at Wellingborough, will be the winners if industrial action continues. And it looks as though it will, with a three-day stoppage next week. Well, Matt, we've had a bit of problems just with the sound for me, but uh, hopefully you can fill us in with the details of that stoppage. More bad news then. Yeah, bad news for the public, Jonathan. Looks like the CWU really wants to ratchet up the pressure on the management and on the government, just as it said it would. Planning a three-day strike now for Thursday, Friday and Saturday of next week. And the problem will be, of course, that there simply won't be time to clear the backlog of mail that has built up from this two-day strike and the previous one-day actions that we've seen. A lot of postage will simply end up going into storage again. It could be who knows how long until it's worth putting one of these into one of these. Thank you, Matt.
Well, Matt said there are plenty of people he spoke to today were for the strike, but as far as the emails you sent us, well, they tell a different story. They certainly do. Here are just a few of them. Melanie Andrews from Lingwood uh, in Norfolk says, those people that strike should think themselves lucky they have a job. If they don't want one, then move over and let someone else have it. Well, to a postman now. David from Ipswich has been delivering letters for the last 37 years and wanted us to know that he has never gone on strike and will still go in tonight. Let's end the feedback, though, with a thought of small businesses in our area. Yep. Uh, Dennis Harvey, who's from Cromer, says that after a difficult two years, businesses could do without further setbacks and says the government should step in to ban this strike, which will cripple many businesses already coping with ever-increasing costs. Thank you, as ever, for your forthright opinions on that topic. Thanks for all of those. Now, friends and colleagues have paid tribute to a pub chef from Suffolk who drowned while on holiday in Spain. 29-year-old Mark Porter from Haverhill was one of a group of holidaymakers struck by a freak wave while taking a midnight swim in the sea off the resort of Salou. Both Mark and a 24-year-old woman from Scotland drowned. Staff at the Bell in Haverhill, where Mark was the head chef, are devastated by the news. He's helped me out so much and I can never thank him enough. Because he's changed who I am. Couldn't have asked for a nicer boss. The annual poppy appeal was launched today. Over the course of the next few weeks, the Royal British Legion is hoping to raise more than the £4 million they collected in the eastern region alone last year. This year, support for the wounded and bereaved in Afghanistan is at the heart of their campaign, as Malcolm Robertson now reports. He was until recently the head of the British Army. Today, a rather more modest duty for General Sir Richard Dannett but one he regards as no less important, launching the Royal British Legion's poppy appeal in Norfolk. Similar ceremonies were taking place in the various counties across our region. In London, Force's sweetheart Dame Vera Lynn and the rather younger singer Hayley Westenra launched the national appeal. In Norwich today were soldiers from the Light Dragoons, based at nearby Swanton Morley. This year, more than 300 of them have been in Afghanistan, involved in some of the fiercest battles with the Taliban since the conflict began in 2001. Captain John Arkell had to return home after just six weeks after being injured in a bomb blast. We had an, an improvised explosive device that sadly killed my uh, Lance Sergeant Fasfus from the Welsh Guards. Um, and I was very fortunate to survive. Um, and sadly, with the Light Dragoons, we had those that uh, didn't survive. Um, but uh, that's why the support's fantastic. More money, the better, really. The Royal British Legion has set a fundraising target of £31 million, exactly the same amount raised from last year's record-breaking appeal. Our region raised more than £4 million from the sale of poppies last year. Over £2 million of that was spent on the welfare of those involved with the armed forces. This year's poppy appeal is probably more hard-hitting than ever before, trying to change the perception that the money raised is just for those who've been involved in conflicts in the past. It's a message the Royal British Legion is determined to get across. With military campaigns being conducted now and servicemen sadly losing their lives and families being bereaved and other servicemen being injured, that the needs of the old, the not-so-old and the young who are victims of war, who have given their lives or have given parts of themselves in the service of the country, that they're looked after as well. Retired he may be, but Sir Richard Dannett is determined to still play an active role in the welfare of our armed forces. Malcolm Robertson, Anglia News, Norwich. Next tonight, a boy from Wellingborough in Northamptonshire, who was so premature he almost died, has been visiting the hospital he was treated in ten years ago. Samuel Swan weighed just one pound, one ounce when he was born. He was so premature that doctors said he only had a 20% chance of survival. Liz Wickham has our report. Samuel Swan was keen to show me how much he'd grown since he was last at Wexham Park Hospital. There's Mummy and Daddy holding my special teddy. Oh, me! Oh, yes, now that's, a, that's when you were really, really tiny, isn't it? Yeah. Goodness me, we can hardly even see you. And there you are again. With Mummy! Yes, with Mummy! He weighed only one pound, one ounce when he was born here ten years ago. Mum Joanna's placenta had failed and he was delivered by emergency caesarean at 26 weeks. Now on his tenth birthday, he's come back to the neonatal unit to say thank you to all those people who helped save his life. I went in one of those. In one of those incubators? Yes. And then I nearly died. 
and then the doctors and nurses saved me. It's just lovely to be able to talk to him and see him, because I haven't seen him, I don't think, um, since he went home from the unit. So ten years is a long time. He has a few problems associated with, with his prematurity, um, but, uh, you know, if you think about back to when he was born, you know, the prognosis was, was quite bleak, and we didn't really know how he would develop, but he, as you can see, he's developed into a a really talkative, chatty young man. He has epilepsy um, and he's on the autistic spectrum, um, but that's manageable, really, and his quality of life is really, really good. And he loves reading, he loves singing, he does lots of things with school, and um, he's just doing really well. In fact, at home, he and his little brother, Archie, could easily be mistaken for superhero Harry Potter and his mate, Ron Weasley. I do so many star jumps. From one of the smallest babies ever to survive in the UK to a bouncing, star jumping 10 year old. Happy birthday! Many happy returns, Samuel. Liz Wickham, Anglia tonight, Wexham Park Hospital.